Good evening, YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. Today, guys, I want to share with you another watch for the collection. Uh, this is a, a brand that goes by the name of, I think it's, I think it's pronounced Ligi Design. It's L-I-G-E Design, uh, very similar to Pagani Design and Benyard Design. Um, this is, uh, all right, so let's start. So, all right, so this is, in my opinion, uh, one of these watches that you're going to get off AliExpress, DHgate, Amazon, eBay. Um, they're one of those more affordable watch brands. Um, the one I'm going to share with you guys today is a Submariner Homage. It's a GMT. Uh, so, um, where did I... So, let me, let me just... Before we begin, let me show you the box. So, box is pretty similar to a Pagani Design Box. Uh, Pag Pagani Design Boxes are generally black, kind of like a faux suede. Uh, you have your gold logo, of course, in this, this particular watch, Ligi Design. Uh, kind of folds open like a clam. Pretty straightforward, pretty basic. You guys know I never really get too involved in showing you guys the box. You get your paperwork with this uh, particular watch, at least mine did. Came with instruction manual, paperwork, warranty card, all that stuff from the manufacturer. Um, and uh, this came from, I got mine off Ally Express. Uh, now, the price on it was about $68, which is pretty good. I ended up selling uh, one of my other watches that I just never wore. Um, and, you know, I, I know you guys, a lot of times I... Here's the watch. I know a lot of times you guys uh, think I hate Rolex or I don't like Rolex or, or any, any brands like Rolex. It's not true. I, I appreciate all brands of watches. I just don't... I can't rationalize the amount of money you spend on some of those really high-end luxury watches. I know the quality is definitely going to be there, you know, over something like this, of course, but not to the point where I'm willing to, to shell that much money. So let's just go ahead and get a couple close-ups here. And I'm going to tell you about my story and my gripes with this particular piece. All right, so um, you might be wondering why, you know, with all the homage watches that I have to a Rolex Submariner, why would I want to go ahead and get another one? Well, what I really liked about this particular one is, um, you know, I, I think with a, with a watch collection, you know, what do we think of when we think of, you know, all the different watch brands out there, the mainstream brands? You think of Submariners, you think of Patek Nautilus, you think of the Royal Oak, of course, lots of Invictus, all that stuff. Um, you know, there's tons of different brands, but every manufacturer has one that just kind of stands out and kind of like is kind of the face of the brand, you know, and I think for Rolex, that is the Submariner. Now, a lot of companies make homage watches uh, to the Submariner. You can get a lot of fakes out there as well. Um, what really drew me to this was I had a watch that I sold, you know, and I, I didn't, I got about a hundred bucks for it. By the time you're done with eBay fees and everything and shipping, you know, I cleared about 70 bucks. So I wanted to get something else in the $70 price range. And what I really liked about this, believe it or not, it's really hard to find red face watches. Now I know there are they are out there, but I have a really hard time finding them. Um, now with this particular watch, what I liked about it is that it is your traditional uh, Rolex Coca-Cola style, which your which has that black and red bezel. But if you look around for homage watches or Submariner style watches with this particular bezel, you are not going to find one with a red face. So this was extremely unique this watch and not only is it just a red face but it's got that black gradient it's a really sweet candy apple red face and i you know when i first saw the watch i think i stumbled upon the watch on ally express um i was going to just get a red bezel or a black and red bezel uh no sorry there's another liege liege watch that had a red bezel and red face i don't know i was looking at a couple different watches by um by uh, Vostok, they make a red-faced watch. I want something in red. Um, and I stumbled upon this one. I saw a guy do a video review on it, and it just really looked great in the picture. Uh, now, I will tell you that the watch is beautiful. I absolutely love the look of the watch. Um, this is one of my... This is my very first automatic GMT movement, so we're going to talk about that uh, in a second as well. Um, I do have the Invicta Hydromax in a GMT movement. Uh, God, I hope you guys can really get a nice clear shot on this. You know, it's like either you have too much light or not enough light, and I just hope that we're not getting tons of glare. I hope you really get a good shot here, and I hope this is focusing for you. Try to get my face out of, out of here. Um, you know, it's your traditional, you know, Submariner style watch, right? GMT. Um, another watch I've been eyeballing is Pagani Design uh, Batman. I want to pick one up for the collection. I like the blue and black. Um, you know, uh, so this one here, you know, I, I, I decided to get it because the price was right. It, it was the amount of money I wanted to spend, $68, right? And uh, again, when I looked for these on Amazon, you couldn't find them. You can find them on eBay, but they're a lot more. They're, they're quite a bit more. And they're all coming directly from China. Um I've said it before, if you can get something through Amazon, get it through Amazon. And this is, again, that's, I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit with this particular watch. Um, so let's uh, talk a little bit about specifics. So it is an automatic movement. You have an exhibition window on the back. Um, with watches like this, 
you just never know what you're going to get if you're not familiar with the brand. And I'm glad I got it because I wanted to at least share this with my subscribers. You know, you have a lot of the inexpensive $20, $30 watches all over AliExpress. You can find them on Amazon as well. You have your Pagani Designs, your Benyard, your Bursingers. Uh, what else? You got um, you know a whole slew of watches. Your inexpensive Quartz Pro Divers, your Automatic Pro Divers, all those watches in the six, you know, say $30 to you know $100 price range. I do want to get another Invicta, and again, I, I really like that red face, and I, and I encourage you, if you are looking for something with a red face, to check this watch out. Um, it's not just a red face, it just has that beautiful candy apple, that black gradient from the edge of the face, all the way into the just the bright red right in the center. Um, and of course, again, that GMT movement is really cool. Uh, sorry, I got thrown off by the, by the beauty of the watch. So, um, again, with, with other brands out there, I purchased uh, Tyvis is another name. Um, you know, I purchased my Hulk Tyvis, and, you know, the quality is amazing for 25 bucks. but when you're looking at something like this, I was kind of wondering what you're going to get. You know, is it going to be, if, if you're familiar with Pagani Design or your Invicta Pro Divers, your Aqua Seas, you, you know, the, the, the brands of watches, all the homage watches that are pretty much very similar when it comes to quality, um, you know, I wasn't sure what you're going to get for $68. Um, I know I've had some replica watches that the quality is it's just there for the price. It's amazing. Uh, with this, it wasn't too sure. Moving on, this is a Pearl uh, Automatic GMT. It is the Pearl DG5833. Um, now, I never had a Pearl move before, but I think a Pearl uh, is just another name for the DG5833, which you can find that under, looks like Ming Zhou. Uh, M-I-N-G-Z-H-U, and several other names. So I think they just rebranded it and called it Pearl. Uh, not really sure why, uh, but that is what they call it. As far as the case thickness, you're looking at 14 millimeters in case thickness, 40 millimeters in case diameter, so it's a you know pretty small watch. Uh, 220 millimeters, it says max perimeter. I, I, I think that just is, is the... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they give. i never seen a perimeter measurement on that, but I guess that's around. Uh, again, Pearl DG5833 GMT movement. Uh, bracelet width is 20 millimeters. It is 316 stainless steel, uh, and you have a synthetic sapphire crystal. Uh, and again, you get your warranty card and all that stuff, right? So um, what do I think about this watch, right? So I think this is very similar to a Pagani design, um, it, hence the name Ligi design. I think these are pretty much the same watch. They're just made uh, maybe in the same factory, but under different names, different branding. And I think that a lot of the Submariner watches you're gonna get from China are gonna be pretty similar in quality and just under different names. Um, I think this is definitely on par with the Pagani uh, with a $20 less price. Uh, so I think it's a fantastic value. Um, I have noticed that on some of the Pagani designs, the case back is a little bit different. Um, I won't say one's better than another, but this is a threaded screw-on case back, so I think they're pretty comparable. Nice, huge exhibition window on this. You can really see the movement, and I think it's a nice-looking movement as well. You know, it's not just a plain old rotor. Um, it's slightly kind of chiseled out and carved. I think it's pretty, right? Uh, bezel movement, 120 click unidirectional bezel. Um, I would say the bezel could be a little bit better, but again, for me, it's never an issue whatsoever. But I know for some people who do collect watches and are interested in you know, getting watches in their collection, they might be a little more particular. I will say the bezel on this is not as nice as the Pro Diver or some of the Pagani designs I have. Um, the, the movement's fantastic on it, but there is a teeny bit of back play, but not much. I mean, it's, just, it's very... You can see it right there, very slight. There's no wobble left and right. Um, now, so again, quality is, I mean, if, if you're familiar with Pagani Design, Evicta Pro Divers, the quality is there. You have nice 316 L stainless steel. You have a nice quality uh, pearl movement, which from my understanding is a clone of the ETA 2892 GMT movement. Um, and I think I have one of the ETAs, I don't know if it's, it's definitely not 2092, and one of my Aqua Dive watches. Uh, remember, this is not rocket science, so when a company decides to clone a movement, um, you know, you're getting a really nice quality of movement for a lot less. Now, I'm not saying as far as longevity, I can't predict how long something will last, but I think this is a pretty good movement. Now, let's get to my gripe on this. So, one thing I've noticed with this watch is the crown upon uh, trying to set the time when I first got it, it's a little bit gritty. Uh, definitely grittier than you're gonna find on like an Evicta. Um, in addition, this crown, or if you're not familiar with the GMT movement, this crown actually has three positions. So you have the unscrew position, position one, two, and three. Um, it's not a really definite, defined click, especially when I first got it. Um, it could be a little bit better, right? Uh, now, when I first got it, what I found really difficult was when I first tried to wind it, 
you'd wind it, it would start to re-thread on the crown on the uh, on the threads for the crown lockdown. Um, so there wasn't any real defined click, which is really strange. I'm not sure what the problem is with the watch or was with the watch. I'm going to kind of give it some time and see. Um, but I could not set the time, right? Every time you'd pull the crown out, you were actually spinning the GMT hand and spinning your your regular, um, you know, your standard time hand, right? The idea in a lot of GMTs is when you set them, you either pull them to the number one position, number two position, number three, depending on the movement. So I have one of my Invictas, it's a quartz. When I set the GMT on that, you pull the crown out to the number two position and you basically turn clockwise for the standard time and then counterclockwise to set the GMT hand. With this, the way this works is you pull the crown out <clears throat> and you go to the number one position to wind to hand wind the watch. When you pull it to the number two position, you then are going to change the date by turning clockwise and counterclockwise will turn the GMT hand. When you pull to the number third, three position, you will then turn clockwise to set your standard uh, primary um, hands and mi minute hands, right? That's a pretty much in a nutshell how it works. This thing was super gritty and you could not get it to kind of stop in the different positions. It just felt like it wasn't pulling out enough or it just wasn't working properly. Um, I did contact Liji, and this is my complaint, what I want to share with you guys. I did contact Liji directly from their website. Now these watches, wherever you see these advertised, eBay, if you find them on Amazon, you find them on AliExpress, DHgate, they all mention that they come with the manufacturer's warranty. Now I don't know how, how warranties work in other countries, uh, but when you provide a warranty for a product, it is transferable. That, you know, that, what I mean by that is when you buy a watch from, it does, you don't have to buy a watch or buy a product directly from the manufacturer. If I buy a Vizio TV um, and it comes with a one year warranty, whether I buy it through Vizio or Best Buy or Walmart, you, they still honor the warranty. Now this is kind of a scumbag company, I'm not going to lie. Uh, this guy that I contacted with their live chat was extremely rude and they pretty much told me you have to deal with the seller and I said well the watch does come with a two year warranty it's clearly listed on your website and they basically claim that they don't honor the warranties if you don't buy it directly from the manufacturer which is a complete nonsense that's not the way warranties work now there are sp situations where if you buy something from a non-authorized dealer um, that they will not honor the warranty. That does happen with, you know, I remember back in, back in the day when you could buy like a lot of electronics from New York, um, you'd find electronics from stores uh, that were selling things that, you know, were not warranted by the manufacturer because maybe there were things that came back broken or resold. Remember, when you buy stuff online, you really have to be pretty careful with where you're buying it. The downside is if you were gonna buy this watch through Liji, they charge $232 for a watch that you can easily get for $68 on AliExpress. Now on AliExpress, these are reputable sellers. Uh, you know, they list manufacturer's warranty. These are not serial numbered watches, so there is no way that a company like Liji could tell where you purchased the watch from. Um, really all you would need is some sort of proof of purchase. And if they're requiring you to purchase the watch directly through their website, that's not a two-year warranty. Their watches should not be shipped with a warranty card if that's the case. Now, you know, if it's up to them, they're going to make up some story about how, oh, these are fake watches. And that was really interesting when I first contacted them. They'd be like, well, are you sure it's a genuine Liji? Lots of people are, 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 uh, are uh, faking our product. No, a lot of people are not faking your product. That's just another way to, to not have them be able to provide the warranty. If you buy the watch through them, you're paying way too much for this watch at $232. This is a $68 to $80 watch. Uh, now, and I, you guys know how I feel about watch markup and all that stuff. I mean, I, I think there's levels of quality, and I think there's levels of quality that really are a complete ripoff. I think Rolex is a complete ripoff. I'll always think that. And uh, granted, you probably aren't going to have problems like this with a Rolex, right? Doesn't mean you can't have problems. There's lots of people who have issues with every brand out there. I mean, it, it does happen, but, um, you know, probably not like this, right? So, uh, what, again, what I found really disappointing is that the company went ahead and just basically said, and they were really rude about it, basically, you are stuck to deal with, with your seller and we don't honor that warranty. And there's nothing wrong with the company stating that, hey, we don't have a warranty or you know, we only honor warranties that we sell. We have an in-house warranty and you have to buy it through Liji Direct, but that's not the case. All their watches from these other sellers are basically being sold under false pretenses that they come with a manufacturer's warranty. And what will happen is if you buy one of their products, 
through anywhere else, Amazon, eBay, anywhere, they're going to basically tell you if you have a problem with it that you are out of luck. So I would highly encourage people uh, to, to not buy this brand and to buy any brand that's going to pull that. You know, I understand that there is a, a warranty with things and if you have something over a year or two years, whatever the term is, that you're out of luck and you do need proof of purchase, right? But as far as proof of purchase, I can provide that. Like I bought this watch, you know, I just got the watch in the mail and already it's having problems. Um, so again, um, I would highly, highly, highly encourage people that if you are in the market for a Submariner style watch, I'm not saying you won't get one from Legi and have a good experience and not have any kind of issues, but should you have one, understand that you are not going to get any help from the manufacturer. And that says a lot about a company. Um, I've dealt with a lot of different companies. I've, I own a lot of different watches. Very rarely have I ever had a problem. I've never had a problem like this with Invicta. I, I haven't had the problem like this with any watch for that matter. I mean, no other brand. And again, I just probably had bad luck. And these things happen. But it is up to the manufacturer to at least do the right thing and say, hey, we can fix that for you. Or, hey, we'll swap it out for you. You know, um, It doesn't really matter whether you bought it direct from the manufacturer. This is You're their customer. This is their brand. And to make up some story about our watches, or, or a lot of people are faking them, it's completely untrue. When people replicate watches, there are fake Rolexes out there. People generally, or companies generally, will fake an expensive watch, something thousands of thousands of dollars, and then you'll pay about 50, 60 bucks for it, and you're getting a quality watch like this, and this level of quality, you know, basic 316 stainless steel, that kind of stuff, right? You're not getting the actual Rolex, but you're getting something that's, that, that's a nice quality watch. Uh, again, under macro, you're, you're going to be able to see the differences, right, for, for to a trained eye. But they don't replicate $68 watches. And if they do, they're extremely noticeable. If you ever checked out my video I did with that one watch I got that I thought was just kind of like a homage to a diesel watch. I got it for $15. Diesel watches are about $200, $250, right? <clears throat> what was really interesting is it was a diesel watch. And I was surprised that it was a replicated diesel watch. I didn't think they replicated inexpensive watches like that. Well, when they do, the quality is really apparent. There's no second guessing. When you pick up my Rolex, my fake Rolex or fake Omega, when you pick those up, you can say, man, I'm not really sure if this is real. Like, you'd have to know what to look for. When you pick up that watch, you can very easily feel it's not even stainless steel. It's tinny, super light, hollow, you know, really crappy. You're probably going to see things falling off. Like, you know, it's really noticeable. So when you look at entry-level fakes or fakes of inexpensive watches or affordable watches, they're really garbage. They're really bad. Uh, it's not like your $50, $60 watches, you know. And so a company like this to make a statement that, oh, our stuff is really faked a lot. No, it's not. People don't, companies do not go out of their way to fake Legi watches. They're not desirable um, they're desirable. Well, I, I desire. Well, I like it, right? But they're not the kind of thing that's desirable, like a Rolex, a Patek. They're not something that companies are like, all right, we can fake this for and sell it for fifty bucks and make make a lot of money doing so, right? Why would you buy a, a fake Legi watch when you can buy the authentic one for seventy dollars? And this company, you know, they can make the claims all day long that this is a two hundred thirty-two dollar watch. It's not. The, 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 what you get on this watch is the same you get from Pagani Design, Benyar, and, and hundreds of other brands out there. So, again, disappointing that the company is like that without even trying to be polite and nice about it. They're pretty much, why are you wasting my time, they said. So, I mean, I, I would not buy another Legi product. There's too many other nice manufacturers out there. There's too many other high-quality watches that are great value. You, If you had a problem with an Invicta like that, they're going to take care of you. You know, you're not going to get that kind of stuff. I've had issues with Invictas where, like, I order it. I didn't get it for, you know, a couple weeks, like the, uh, like my, I'll review this one pretty soon, the, um, the Akula, uh, you know, it just went discontinued. They oversold, right? These things happen. I get out disappointed, but they were really nice and really went out of their way to say, hey, we, we apologize. These things happen. You know, we'll give you free shipping on the next order or something like that. So, you know, you're going to have a company who, who it does feel like with Invicta, you're going to, that's a company that cares about their, their customers. They don't want to piss off any of their customers. You're not going to get that kind of attitude. With Legi, that's the attitude you're going to get. So I highly encourage you to not buy a Legi. Uh, there, again, you can get Pagani Design, which are fantastic. Lots of other brands out there. You're Invictus. Uh, but if you do want to buy a Legi, I, I would encourage you, you know, if you are going to buy it, the reason I bought it was only because of this color. If Pagani Design would have came out with this watch, with this color face, the red and, and this bezel, uh, I, I would have bought it through Pagani Design. Now, the other thing to be noted here, too, they also say... Uh, that I believe they say this. Let me double check it here. Um, 
they say it has a ceramic bezel. So I can tell you right now, this is this is not a ceramic bezel. Uh, you can very easily, it almost looks like a half ceramic bezel. That's not the way it works. And you probably can't see it under the lighting here or under this, you know, in this video. But the red is very apparent that this is a some sort of aluminum or metal bezel insert. It's still really nice, but that's, you know, not true. This is not a ceramic bezel, uh, at least not that I can tell. Usually ceramics uh, don't have a metallic finish to them. They have a, a very kind of rich um, you know, porcelain-like finish to them. Uh, this, you can tell, it almost looks like like an automotive paint job. You know, it's got that kind of metallic, that anodized aluminum. I think this is just an anodized aluminum bezel. But, um, you know, overall, though, it's a pretty nice watch, despite the fact <clears throat> that uh, I have some issues with it. Um, you know, it's a luck of the draw. These things do happen. These are not, you know, uh, you know, if it can happen with a $10,000 Rolex, pips not lining up, issues. I've, I get comments all the time, people have had issues. It can happen with anything. So, you know, this is life. You know, I mean, it's not the end of the world. I, I don't encourage you, if you do really love the way this looks, I would encourage you to buy one and try it. Uh, I, you know, I don't, I, I think you'll probably get lucky on it. You know, I don't think that they have a lot of watches of problems, but unfortunately, I had a problem with it. Now, it is to be noted that once I pulled the crown out and I actually took a little mini screwdriver and I actually popped it and kind of forced it a little bit it started to seat a little better. So now I can actually wind the crown without it trying to, um, or wind the stem or the watch without it trying to rebind on the uh, threads and screw itself down. Uh, I can get it to the number two position, although it's not a nice solid click, it is there. Uh, the third position is a lot easier. Um, only downside is when you go to set the GMT and you pop the crown back in, it moves to the GMT hand. So. Definitely some, something quirky about it, not really sure, but you know, I'll still wear it, I'll still enjoy it, uh, and we'll see if Ally Express can do anything with you know, getting the seller to discount it or, or replace it. If the seller's willing to send me a new one with a prepaid label, I'll be more than happy to send this back, but uh, we'll see if they actually do that. A lot of these sellers, um, I, I will say that Ally Express is pretty darn good about taking care of the customer, just like eBay. Um, I've had a few issues with, you know, uh, you know, shirts not being exactly what I ordered, and, and they will refund you. Uh, so we'll see what they say. You know, a shirt uh, being sent, it's a totally different material. You can see it by the picture. If something like this you can't see, you kind of have to take the buyer's word for it. But, you know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. And I will let you guys know. But um, overall, though, I still love the color, and I am going to show you guys what it looks like on the wrist. Uh, now, I am about five foot seven and a half. I weigh about 180 pounds. So, uh, and again, I have a seven inch wrist. So this is what watches like this look like on me 40 millimeters. Not a big watch, but it is a great looking piece. Uh, one thing I've noticed too with Pagani Design, this watch, no different, um, is that the clasp, once I get it on, I can't get the clasp off without kind of popping it open with like, um, you know, a little piece of plastic or a mini screwdriver. They just, I can't get my nail in there with enough force to get it off. Another thing to be mentioned about this watch too, it does have a kind of a basic dive extension. This is completely defective. So it does not, this is kind of a friction lock supposed to just kind of close on itself uh, this is always open so disappointing as well um, says a lot you know I mean it, I've never had that happen with Pagani Designer Invicta but um, you know it can happen maybe I just got a bum one who knows but I uh, you know I, I'm not complaining too much for $68 it's still a great looking piece and uh, it just really has a that red really has just a rich look to it I like it way more uh, than your black face with the uh, with the standard coke bezel and I think it's pretty surprising that of all the Coke homage watches out there, you know, the, the red and black bezels, the Pepsis, you know, the Hulks, all that stuff, with all the Cokes out there, I've never seen one with a red face. So it is very unique to this watch, and uh, I, I think it's a great looking piece. And like I said, even though, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of an issue, my only concern is that I can set the time, which now that I've kind of popped that crown out a little further, um, I can set it. It does work, uh, and it seems to be functional. Uh, another thing to mention, they talk about the loom. They mention that it has uh, BGW9. Uh, I'll tell you, the, 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 the uh, loom on this is pretty bad. If you've ever checked out Steel Dive, my video on Steel Dive, or my video on um, Addy's Dive, which is just a new one, you may not have saw it yet, uh, the loom is amazing. Like, I mean, I've charged up with a flashlight. It literally will last all night long. When I wake up in the morning, like after eight hours, there is a dull glow. With this, charge it up. You're lucky if you get 10 minutes out of it. So really bad loom, uh, but nonetheless, you know, it, it, it's an inexpensive watch and I still really like it. 
So let me know what you guys think about this brand. If you had any kind of um, issues with Allegi, uh, whether through, the, through their customer service or through, uh, you know, um, you know their products, let me know what you guys think of the brand. Um, you know, all this information is really important to help people if they're looking to make a purchase. Um, you know, again, these are the kind of things I hate doing. I hate putting up a video where I have a bad experience. But, I mean, like I said, you guys may... Somebody may order one. They, they may have sold thousands, not had any kind of issues. The gentleman who reviewed one on YouTube, uh, the other guy who's who's uh, the only other guy who's reviewed this watch, uh, you know, it, it kind of pushed me to want it more. It was such a nice looking watch, uh, and the only issue he had was a little piece of lint under the crystal. Uh, to me, that's nothing. I, I could care less. I just want it to be functional and work. Uh, but it's you know a little disappointing. But uh, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Drop me a comment. Drop me an email. I'm always here to help. Remember, guys, if you do like the content, subscribe to the channel. As always, guys, have a wonderful weekend and take care.